I wanted to be a pig farmer, um, then a mechanic, then an artist, and then I thought, no, none of them were really going to take me where I wanted to go. So I said to mum, I just don't know what I want to do. And she said, I always wanted to be an OT, but I got talked out of it. And she said, you can work one-on-one -on -one with children. And I thought, that sounds good. So my mum was a teacher, my sister was a teacher, and I thought, let's do something different. Yeah, so that was why I went into it. We did a subject at uni, I remember, where we had to make splints. And having wanted to be an artist, that was the closest thing I could get to some kind of moulding or something. Um, so I really lo I loved it. I loved it and I thought, oh, this is something that I am really interested in. Um, and then I did my fourth year prac um, at Newcastle Hospital in hand therapy and I had a great supervisor and I walked away from that knowing that that was definitely an area that I was interested in. When you graduated, your first job was in a hospital, is that right? I worked at RPA Hospital and I would strategically chosen that because I knew I wanted to work in hand therapy and it had a rotation in hand therapy and that was something that was really appealing that I could test out a few areas of OT before specialising. I just happened to be at a work function and chatting to one of the surgeons that I worked with and he had relocated to Wagga and I was just asking him how Wagga was going and he mentioned that there was a need for a hand therapist in Wagga and my little ears pricked up and I said to him, oh, I would move to Wagga if you needed somebody and then went home and broke the news to my husband that I had said that and he was very accommodating because he was a country guy as well. I was a country girl and we went down and had a look at Wagga. We didn't know where Wagga Wagga was. Um, we went down and had a look and really liked it and thought, okay, let's start something while I'm on maternity leave and my husband was still working in Sydney. I drove up and down with my baby for nine months, um, working a couple of days, drove back to Sydney, go down again the next week or the next fortnight, work a couple of days. Um, and after nine months, Ruby stopped sleeping in the car and the car trip was taking seven and a half hours instead of five and a half hours. And I said to my husband, I think we need to make a decision. So we decided then that we would move. And as of that point, the practice just grew. And initially I thought it would just be me a couple of days a week, being at home then with baby that would be all great but it just people just kept coming and coming and coming and I didn't realize how many people in the Riverina would need hand therapy care so it just grew. And having your own private practice I felt like because I was only had been out of uni six years really when I launched my private practice and it was always something I thought that people much older than me went into and you do that when you become a guru um, and so it was a little bit daunting to start with kind of trying to promote myself um, and people paying to come and see me um, when I really felt that I hadn't become a guru yet um, so I found that a little bit difficult to start off with from there and it wasn't till I moved there that I then started to let the GPs know I was around and, and the other surgeons as well. Mm. So River and Hand Therapy is very busy now and it has a few little side projects happening. Um, the Hand Therapy is still our core business and we, we, that's kind of the majority of work that's coming in at the moment and I have two full-time hand therapists that work for me. Um, and we get a lot of referrals now still from that same surgeon um, but also from a lot of the other surgeons and a lot of the GPs and other health professionals as well such as the local physios which is great. Um, and then we were getting quite a lot of children coming with handwriting problems and I guess because we were hand therapists we were seen to you know be able to provide that service but a lot of the children coming in had a lot more than just physical handwriting problems so they had a lot of sensory difficulties um, they had a lot you know some children were coming in with autism or with attention disorders and for hand therapists, we didn't really feel we were trained to provide the best care for those children. So we ended up putting on a paediatric therapist who did a combined caseload of peds and hand therapy. And then over time, it just kept evolving and more and more peds children were you know, coming for therapy. So we launched Riverina Kids Therapy, 
um, under the umbrella of Rivalina Hand Therapy, so we could make that a specific, you know, therapy service that we could offer on its own um, because we could see that it was it really was a specialty of its own rather than lumping it in with hand therapy.